Hello everybody and welcome. Today I wanted to talk about the three generations of consciousness. Yes, you've heard me correctly, the three generations of consciousness. I'm sure that, you've, uh, that you know about the three generations of elemental particles, but certainly you have never heard about um, consciousness also coming in three generations, right? Thus, the whole sounds like an interesting topic. So, let's get right into it. What is consciousness? Well, I think this question is as old as mankind. At least, so I'm convinced. The moment the first human being started to use fire to warm themselves and spend the evenings huddled together around the fireplace, sooner or later the question must have been asked. What is it to make us feel our existence? What is this thing which makes me realize that I am and that mirrors this funny and sometimes fuzzy thing I call self or myself. In other words, the question of what actually is consciousness is most likely at least one million years old. In my most recent video, please find the video link in the description to this presentation and as number one at the end of my talk, I have shown that in order to avoid to push any existing theory into the comprehension of consciousness, we start our consideration with the assumption that everything, including consciousness, may consist of attributes or properties. But attributes or properties can just be seen as degrees of freedom and thus dimensions. Dimensions, however, as everybody knows, from space or space-time and by subjecting these properties to a general Hamilton extremal principle, thereby using the Riemann theory of Hilbert techniques, we most surprisingly ended up in generalized Einstein field equations. These equations do not only contain the full theory of general relativity, see the red ellipse, but lo and behold also include all main quantum equations, be it for bosonic or fermionic entities. The whole ensemble undoubtedly has the characteristics of a quantum gravity theory, and the best part of it is that it was already there for about 107 years in a paper from the great mathematician David Hilbert. Only that neither Hilbert nor Einstein had a chance to see it, because the more advanced mathematical quantum theory came over a decade after the general theory of relativity and then the theoreticians were so overwhelmed by the new quantum theory that nobody, at least so it seems, ever looked back at the old Hilbert work from 1915. Many scientists try to understand consciousness via quantum concepts. Taking alone the mass of YouTube videos about the matter proves this point. This is no big surprise to me, because even before I went to school, which is about 10 years ago, I always understood my own consciousness to be a rather uncertain, if not to say messy thing. Here again I show you one of my earliest pictures to the topic. Here however I have squeezed it between two vector fields in order to illustrate di the dynamic of consciousness. However, there is a drawback to such quantum description of consciousness. It seems to result from the old problem that our current quantum theory is not of metric origin or, in other words, does not appear to be fully compatible with Einstein's general theory of relativity. This lack of a true quantum gravity theory does seem to be the major obstacle for all our attempts to understand consciousness. After all, it could well be that consciousness potentially embedding both quantum and cosmic scales, requires a truly scale, invariant and thus metric theory. And as Ori said at the beginning of my presentation, in order to overcome these difficulties, some scientists have explicitly tried to avoid to push any existing theory into the comprehension of consciousness, but instead started their consideration with the assumption that everything, including consciousness, may consist of attributes or properties. But now something interesting occurs. 
by applying the so-called contracted Bianchi identity to our generalized Einstein field equations, one ends up in a differential equation of third order. This equation demands, in a very general and fundamental manner, that each and every quantum gravity or metric system has exactly three very fundamental states in which it can manifest itself. Here we find one ground-like state and two excited ones. The math to this can be found in the following book. And here now is the interesting thing. You might have heard about the three generations of elementary particles, which just mean that certain particles, namely the ones we know from our ordinary matter, exist in three forms. The particle physicists call these forms generations. It is the electron, the muon and the tauon for the charged leptons, for instance. Having found now, however, that these three generations result from a mathematical identity for each and every quantum gravity system, and knowing that consciousness can be described as such a system, the question arises whether we should also consider the possibility of the existence of three fundamental generations of consciousness combined, naturally with the more complicated question of how these generations could look like.